All right, we will go ahead and get started. So as you probably have all have seen, this is the new schedule page here. A um, little different look, but as I mentioned, we, we do want to go through it and make sure that uh, we kind of show you what's different about it, some of the updates, and then answer any questions that you guys have. So when we're first looking at this page, you'll see that the boxes are kind of, um, they've been taken off. This is more of a clean look. Um, as I mentioned, still the same features. You do have the edit pencil over here. So if you need to edit any existing games, you would just click on that and it's going to take you right into that same edit game page that we've always had. Over to the right, you do have the slot option. Colors mean the same. Red meaning that there's an action that needs to be taken. Yellow meaning a pending action. So you're waiting for an official to accept an assignment, things like that. And then green meaning you're good to go. These icons over to the right, um, if you have games that are uploaded from schools or there's uh, contracts that you need to accept, same idea here, red meaning there's an action that you need to take on your side. And if you click on that, it will show you the details there. Yellow meaning that there's an action you're waiting for another party to complete. And then green, everybody's accepted the contracts, you're good to go. These icons under the actions column, you have uh, create notes, uh, create a report. And then if you want to delete that game out, you can use that trash can icon to just quickly remove that. Once you hit delete, we do have we have added an archived game sub tab up here at the top, so you can quickly click into that and see any games that are currently in your archive folder. So a couple of key changes that you're probably seeing right off the bat is um, rather than having those colors that uh, were highlighted depending on the game status, we're now using these tags here. So you can see if it's suspended or rained out, it has that tag next to it. Imported, we still kind of keep that same shade of orange, only we've lightened it up to make it easier to read so you can see any games that were uploaded to your account, either by a school or, um, you know, a coach, whatever the case may be. And then also, if we do cancel a game, we do still indicate that with a highlighted color. So if I come into this one and cancel here. Go ahead and save that. As soon as I refresh it. you'll see that that game has that red highlight on it. So it's not as in like intense of a color as it used to be. It's a little more light so that it's easier to read, but we still have those ones there for imported and canceled. Another key change here up at the top, um, we've made sure that the import games option is right there visible so that it's not hidden in a drop down somewhere. Um, same idea, uh, same feature with the tool. Nothing's changed on that. If you click on import games, it's going to take you back to this page where you can download the template and upload your games once you put them on that, that Excel template. Um, a key feature that we've added here is um, with mass updating and filtering, in the past what you've had to do is create a filter and build those games out within that filter in order to do a mass update. That is still an option to do, so you still can come into this add filter option and build out specific games or a specific range of games, whether it be by a home team, date of the game, build to, things like that. But once you've done that, whether you're on one filter that you've built out yourself or you're using these pre-built ones like next week, future, future games, whatever the case may be, what you can do is actually come in and check off which games you want to update. So if I you know, have my filter here, but I only want to update these four games, once I check those off and click on update over under utilities, it's going to take me to that same update page, but you'll see that it's only going to select those four that I put a check mark next to. So that is a new option that we have. If you still want to use the filter or where you, you know, filter for specific games and you want to update all of those, if I wanted to change all of these, all I have to do is just click this top button where that check mark is and it will select all of them that I filtered for. So just a new tool we've added in there to kind of make it easier so that you're not constantly having to build filters and stuff. If there's only you know several games you want to update, you can just quickly check those off. Another filter, another option we've added is um, this filter statistics. So this will kind of give you a better idea of the games and the details that you filtered for. So right here I have my future games. Right here, this is telling me that with those games, I have a total amount of official fees at $660. There's a total of 10 games. There's 14 slots or positions that I need to, to assign for. 
how many are assigned, and how many are unassigned. So this kind of gives you a quick summary of what you filtered for, and you can quickly, based off the number, see if it's correct, if there's something you need to adjust, if things aren't looking the way they should, rather than having to go one by one and count everything up. And then um, the other option that we, like I mentioned, we do have the archived games over here, but at, under our reports tab as well, you do have the option to run reports based off what you filtered for. You can do a PDF file for all those games. Um, you can do an Excel document if that's how you'd like them listed, or you can um, include the official's information such as their address, phone number, things like that. Chase, is there anything else that I missed that you would like to add in? If we could go to the assigning page as well and just do a quick overview of that, that would be great. Yes. So again, if I click on those slots here, I have my position I need to fill and click on assign. Here's a list of all my officials that are eligible to work that position for that game. If I select Gabby here, I can quickly see she has no games before or after, how many games she currently has. I can change the status from here, whether I want her to be pending or published or just put her on as accepted. And then once I have that checked off, I'll hit assign. You'll notice that next to each one of those, there was an option to block. So if you get a large list and you know there's specific people that you don't want on that game, you can put a check mark next to them. And that will um, block them from that date and time. Elliot, one more thing, if you could show it. Sorry, kind of making you jump to something on the fly. If you could click on the schedule tab. And then on your last game on that day, it has three slots. If you could assign that game. There's one more new feature that we've added, which allows you to jump between slots that you're assigning on this page. So you'll see up at the top, there's the assign button um, on the three slots. Um, up a little bit there, Elliot. Oh, right here. Yeah. So previously, you in, in order to switch the slot that you're assigning at any given time, you would have to go back to the schedule page, click the assign slot for line judge instead of head referee, and then and then that's how you would switch. But now you can just click on that, and now you're assigning for the second slot instead of the first. Another thing that we've done on this page is add the edit pencil on the slot so that you can have a shortcut to editing anything related to um, that official's slot information, whether that's the game fee or travel or um, paid by bill to whatever it might be. So a few links on this page that are shortcuts to uh, things that you previously had to make a few clicks to get to. Thank you. And then one other thing I did want to show is we do still have the feature to link games together. So with these two here, if I select them and click link, you'll see that it puts that icon next to it. There's like a little paper clip and it'll give you a link number. If I click on that icon, it will quickly take me to the edit game link page and show me which games are linked together and but based off the game ID numbers. So again, another new icon on there that um, rather than having its own column and seeing a little check mark, we actually put in a full icon so that you can quickly see which, which games are linked. So that kind of wraps up the new um, schedule page. Like I mentioned, it's, it's nothing too crazy. All the features are pretty much the same. It's just a different feel and look for it. But we do want to open it up for, for questions. So if you do have any comments or anything you want to see again, please throw that in the, um, the conversation chat and we'll make sure that we get right to it. While we're collecting these questions in the chat, um, I also wanted to mention on the page, you'll see that there's that uh, little red icon in the bottom left. That is uh, a new thing that we've put on the page that allows you to submit some real-time feedback on your experience. Feel free to be as honest as you want here. We prefer honesty when it comes to these types of changes so that we can deliver you the best product and allow you to assign quickly 
and uh, and schedule quickly. When you do click on one of those icons to indicate how you're feeling about the page, you can also submit a comment and give us a little bit more information on on why you're feeling the way you're feeling about the page, whether that's good or bad or neutral. Um, we'd love to see it. So if you submit your feedback there, it all gets compiled into one spot, and we would uh, love to see it there and respond to it quickly um, in addition to answering your questions here on the webinar. And now that we're getting a few pop up in the chat, I'm going to um, just respond to them verbally rather than typing it out. So the first question from Janet, uh, how do I find the number of games? Hmm. I'm going to unmute you, Janet, so that you can maybe give a little bit more clarification on that. Um, so. Oh, maybe I can't do that, Elliot. Um, she, she should be unmuted. She might have to unmute it from her end, but she should be allowed to. Oh. Hi. Um, previously, when you were uploading a game, a bunch of games, if there was a conflict, it would give you a number of the game that is conflict. Mm -hmm. And then you used to be able to go back to schedule and, and uh, tip off new, and you could put that number in there to find where the conflict is. I'm not seeing that on this new format. Gotcha. No, that's a great question. So that would live under add filter. Elliot, if you could click on that. And then Janet, let me know if this is the page you were looking for. So yeah. if you click add filter, is this what you were looking for? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So it's a new button. It used to say new, and now it just says add filter. And that takes you to the page to search by game number. Thank you. You bet. All right, the next question on the list, how do you mass publish uh, pending assignments? That uh, goes back to the question that was raised, uh, that was covered earlier by Elliot with the check marks on the page. So whenever you're looking to do any of the utilities on the left, if you want to publish all uh, 14 of these or 10 of these games, you could check the box at the top or you could select them individually uh, once you do that, whatever boxes are selected, when you click publish, it's just going to publish those games. Uh, so that's that's how you would mass publish all of your pending assignments or publish for specific games. When I went to assign, it would only show me one page of officials. Okay, that's, a, that's another good question. Not necessarily related to the uh, changes on the design, but if your official is not showing up here, You've got four options up at the top of the list on the left there, ranked officials, available officials, potential, and issue summary. The most wide open version of that is going to be issue summary. That's going to pull in everybody, and what, whether they are available or not. So if you have any, uh, you're not seeing the official you want to see, try clicking on issue summary there, and it's going to give you every possible official for uh, that for that game. And then they may have these issues here, like for example, the one that Elliot's clicked on, officials rank is not in the specified range, or they're not ready to be assigned, or they have a block. Um, so that's, that's how that might, and if they're still not showing up after that, then the next thing to check would be to ensure that they are ranked for that sport and level. Um, and that can be handled from the resources tab. All right, Let's, uh, looks like Bob's got another question. Can I use the filter to list home games by team or school? You sure can, uh, or at least I, I think you can based off of the way I'm understanding your question, um, and just pop in the chat if this doesn't answer it. So you can go to this add filter page, and you can filter on any criteria that you see here. So in this instance, you wanted to do home games by a team or school. So you would say the home team equals whatever you want from this list. And you could even do more than that. You could say, I only want to see during a specific date range or for a specific sport or at a particular site. So you would just choose the home team from this list. And again, you get to this page by clicking the add filter button. How to add a travel fee for a crew without wanting, oh. So adding a travel fee by crew we don't necessarily offer that specifically, but what we do offer is allowing you to create travel rules that will automatically apply to games. Again, a little bit unrelated with what we're going over today, but we can point you in the right direction at least, and if you have any follow-up questions, we can 
we can get you to the right place. So if you go to payroll and then travel fees, you've got this page that allows you to manage your travel fee rules. Feel free to, to kind of play around with that. And if you have any other questions on that, um, you can reach out to us again at support at arbitersports.com. Um, how would you alter game fees? Game fees is a similar situation where you would go to payroll and then game fees instead of travel fees and use the game fee module on that page. Very similar to the travel fee module. It can be updated in mass there. Another way to edit game fees is to do what Elliot's going through right now. You open up the slots, click the edit pencil on the slot, type in the amount differently there. If you do it this way, it's important to lock the slot. Um, so if you edit that again, Elliot, and you change the fee there, it's set at $40. If you want that to change and that change to, to save, you also have to lock the slot, which is that checkbox right above. Yep. And then if you lock it, type in that amount and save it, it will change to $30. You can also use the game fee module again that lives on the payroll tab um, right next to travel fees. Uh, question from Mark Goodhart. Can you open up your entire schedule, for example, fall, soccer, between the dates of some dates? You sure can. Uh, again, that can be done with a filter. You can do it with some of our preset filters. Um, and That's one that Elliot is on right now, all games. That works just fine. You can also do it uh, with, with a custom filter that you create by clicking add filter, and then you can filter by anything on this page. One of those things is date. And uh, another question about what's the update button used for on the schedule utilities. So we did rename mass update and mass archive to just be update and archive. So that update button does the same thing that mass update did previously. We just changed the wording on that. Um, and that's mostly because of the change to our checkboxes on the page. So now it's not necessarily a mass update because you could possibly just check one or two games and now you're just updating a couple of games, but it's going to update any of the games that you have selected. It may be a mass thing because maybe you check all boxes in a filter, which would in this instance update 5,090 games. But uh, we just changed the, the word on that. It still does the same thing that Mass Update did previously. That allows you to update things like the build to on the game. You can verify a bunch of games at once. You can change the travel to be paid or not. There's a lot of things that you can update on the Mass Update page. Um, that's all the questions we have in the chat right now. Is there any follow-up to those questions? Anything else that uh, needed to be brought up? Oh, there's one more. Not the entire game. Okay. Is there a way to make the colors in that column more stark? That is a piece of feedback that we've received a lot this morning. As I've been checking the feedback that's received on that red widget in the bottom left, one of the common ones that's come up is about um, page contrast and being able to read readability, a lot of white and, and lighter text. So one thing to note, and, and this is why it's important to submit feedback and do webinars like this, is that we have plans to adjust and uh, be flexible with this design. So it is a big change that we've submitted today, but we, we, this isn't the final version of what we've got out here. We know that with a big change like this, we're going to have to adjust and change and make sure that we're delivering the best uh, experience to you. And one of those things that I, I anticipate changing is making the contrast a little bit uh, more stark in some areas so that it's more readable. Um, so that's a great uh, piece of feedback from you, Daniel. Thank you. I think that uh, that might wrap up the questions. Um, really great questions, though, that we got today. I'm glad we could cover all of that. Also, I wanted to point out that this will, this was recorded and we will be uploading it to our um, YouTube channel that we have. So if you want to come back and revisit it. I'll make sure that we get that link posted in our help articles. I'm going to post the link to that article so that you guys have access to it. You can go back and look at other webinars as well. But uh, thank you, everybody, for jumping on. I hope this was helpful. Like Chase mentioned, if you do have any questions or any feedback, please reach out to our support team. We will be happy to help you in any way we can and then pass any feedback along so that we discuss this as a team and see how we can improve this and continue to build off of it. But thank you again. Hope everyone has a great rest of their week.